Hey you guys, this is Tony with Wealth Builders HQ and creator of Patterns in Flash. We did a quick review of the uh, patterns that I spotted last week and also the ones that are still on the radar. First, let's get the disclaimer out of the way. I'm not a registered broker deal investment advisor. I will not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything that we do here is purely for educational purposes. If I do mention a trade, just assume it is a practice or a paper trade. For regulatory reasons, we do not discuss funded trading here. So that being said, let's take a peek. We looked at, actually we had three last week. Uh, we had a head and shoulders on Discovery and Starbucks, or not Discovery, uh, Disney and Starbucks. And then also an inverted head and shoulders on uh, Heinz, Kraft Heinz. So let's get over to the charts real quick and check them out. So here is Disney. Uh, let's go back to a little bigger picture. And you can see it's not a beautiful head and shoulders, but it is certainly there. There's a little mini one right here. Created a nice little perfect downswing there, nice little swing trade there. Another little head and shoulders right here, right? That also created another beautiful trade. This is why I love head and shoulders. This is one of my favorite patterns. You can see, even you see smaller ones work out well. They don't always, I mean, you can see here that we had a little bit. You can go back historically and look at things. Here's a head and shoulders, a little really small one. Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't love the smaller ones, but they do, they can be effective. So uh, you just never know, right? That's why we use three to one risk reward. Because then if you're right once and you're wrong twice, it doesn't matter, you're still ahead, right? <laughs> So we've got a big, big head and shoulders playing out. It's definitely not textbook. That right shoulder is super long. It's really taken a long time to play out, uh, but it did break down. And uh, here, just a couple weeks ago, I remember watching this intraday. I think I talked about that on the actual pattern of the week. So those of you that are subscribers saw that. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, that drop, drop, it went from 180 to 170 in about 10 minutes. Five, most of it was in five minutes. It was crazy. There was some kind of news story. I can't remember what it was, but it just went boom, got hammered. Huge volume. Uh, and for the last couple of weeks, it's just been dancing here, trying to uh, trying to get back up. But one of the things that I'm looking at right now that is a huge red flag is look at the volume the last two days. It's been up technically. I mean, it was down this morning. The market was down big this morning, first thing. Uh, futures were really, really dropped off. A lot of stuff gapped down, then it fought its way back most of the day. Uh, but this is a telltale sign that the uptrend, the move that we had today and yesterday was weak. In other words, the bulls, were, there was barely anybody pushing this thing higher. There's just not a lot of activity going on. So now maybe it's because the middle of the week and I, I'm pretty sure Columbus Day is Monday, if I remember right. And uh, so the market should be closed. But uh, just not a lot of bullish momentum at all. So that is a huge red flag for the bulls. Uh, I do not believe this upward move over the last couple days because the volume is super, super light. And when I say super light, it's what, two and a half, three million? It normally averages about nine. So that's about a quarter to a third of the average volume normally. So, uh, and that's pretty standard throughout most stocks today. Um, they may have moved higher. They may have clawed their way back and made a profit, you know, turned out in the green, but the volume was really, really light on most things. Uh, we'll jump to Starbucks because it's also a head and shoulders. Uh, another one you can see, I'll do it, since we're on that theme of volume, look at the volume down here at the bottom. Let me zoom way in so you can see it a little better. Uh, not nearly as light as Disney, but certainly light compared to the average. So not uh, not too exciting. I mean, we have a bullish engulfing pattern there, but the volume is so light, I wouldn't even treat it that way. Uh, the head and shoulders are still there. This is a nice, pretty clean head and shoulders. It makes a nice cleaning the, uh, break of the neckline. Uh, then rallies back up, does a nice little roll reversal on the neckline, and then has started to run lower. The trading plan that I have in place is still, uh, it's still open right now. We'll still see how, uh, see how, see how the next few days. If you haven't noticed, at least the last two or three weeks, the market has had this uh, propensity to go down. It is uh, the buy the rally is kind of on the sidelines right now, and it looks like we're in for a uh, a continued dip. The question becomes how long. Uh, and October is historically a month. I mean, if, if you know anything about the market's history, October is a month that markets crash, right? You had the crash of uh, the, the Great Depression crash in October. Uh, I believe it was in the 80s. The crash in the 80s was also in October, if I remember right. Um, I don't remember the 2008. I don't think it was October, but October has this historical reputation to it that it's when markets crash. So, uh, and there's already people talking about it. And there's a lot of craziness happening right now. The inflation picture, the geopolitical stuff, all the things going on around the world are, uh, it, it, it's ripe for the possibility. If some kind of news happens that makes things unstable, it's probably gonna tank big time. I'm waiting for one big giant 
down day to the to, to the downside. That's what I'm expecting to have happen. So, but Kraft Heinz, uh, get into that. Little inverted head and shoulders, really small. Could also consider it a double bottom, uh, maybe even a triple bottom with the right cheek up. Either way, whatever pattern you want to call it, it broke out. If you could treat it as an inverted head and shoulders like I did, it broke out above the neckline there just a little bit. It rallied up and then pulled back and it started to move higher off of it today. This did the same as most stocks. Uh, gap down a little bit this morning, dropped off quite a bit first thing in the in the morning, and then uh, took off and rallied into the close. But once again, there's that theme. Look at the volume at the bottom. Very, very light volume. So this may be bullish right now, but I'm not that excited about it. Anything bullish right now, I'm very skittish on. All my day trades have been to the downside. Well, I take that back. I traded the bounce this morning. It was down so much that I figured it would bounce. We'd have a little short cover rally, and that worked out well. So... Let's jump through these other ones real quick that are still, AES is still on the radar. Um, if it pops back up in the morning, this one had decent volume, it's still light overall, but not tiny like Disney was. Uh, but again, we got that descending triangle that has danced around, broken down below it, and uh, still looking pretty bearish right now and still some decent potential there, so we'll keep an eye on that. Lowe's, again, is still sitting there at that, uh, it's basically holding that 200 level, 203 level. So if it just continues to go sideways and the market continues to pull back, then this may be a possibility for the upside. I don't like it anymore that much uh, because it's just sideways. You know, usually a flag or a pennant pattern will break out within two or three weeks. And we're two or three weeks here and it tried to break out and it did, but then it couldn't get above 210. And now it's dropped back and it's just sitting here. So not excited about the upside, but it's still on the radar waiting to see what happens with the overall market. Uh, Microsoft, that double top played out well for a day or two, but now it's just kind of dancing here. So I actually like this more now that it's about to pop back up. And you can see, once again, relatively light volume compared to the average, even though it made its way higher and it gained four bucks today, uh, which actually brings us back to the midpoint of that, uh, the double top. So I'm still liking this one right now, Microsoft. Uh, Micron is still a little ways away from the entry point, but it is continuing the downtrend. So this is something that possibly uh, could possibly move the plan down and put, actually, that's not a bad thing right there. That's something I'll look at uh, this next week and play with a little bit more, but we're just doing a review here. So there is a little bit of a support there, about 70 bucks, and could adjust this trading plan down. Put the stop just above 70 and then run the numbers and put a new entry point in there. So, And the last one we'll double check on is Open Door. This is another one that I didn't take, even though it broke out because it had run so far so fast. I waited, sure enough, I was glad I waited, but now it's made its way back up. I did not take it here either, even though it looked good. Um, I was a little bit skittish on it, I left it alone. And uh, I mean, obviously I wish I would have. Of course, it would have been stopped out this day with just a small little profit. So I wasn't too, uh, too beat up about this one, but uh, I don't know what to think of this one anymore. If it comes back down to 18 and settles in and gives in that holds a nice little support there, and the market has a pullback, then I look at possibly a, a run to the upside, but we'll see. So that is it for the uh, review this week. Where did we go? Here we go. And as I say, Mr. Pattern Whisper signing off, saying if you're going to fail one thing, fail it quitting. Have a great night. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the training. Now, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and go ahead and hit the subscribe button right over here and hit the bell to keep up with all the latest trading content. And oh, did you know that we have a podcast? Supercharge your trading education with the Stock Market Millionaire, which you can find in the description down below. And while you're there, you can also find other amazing free trading resources that I put together just for you.